Good evening. So it is evening time for me here at least at the moment and I've been meaning to do this video all day long. Um, anybody who has young children in their lives is going to know how difficult it is to get anything done when they are around you um, and that's definitely been the kind of day I've had today. So I figured, you know what, if I do not do this now, it's just not going to happen today. So I'm taking the opportunity whilst they are brushing their teeth before bedtime um, to make this quick little video. So if I get interrupted part way through, I can only apologise. Who knows what's going to happen? So I really wanted to make a video about the new flower border that we're putting together at the moment. Um, we first made some flower borders following the no dig method last autumn and we planted into them in the spring and it's been a real success for us. Um, so we thought, you know what, let's make some more. So we've done a huge flower border all along one side of the um, boundary in our front garden and it's just kind of work in progress right now. I haven't finished it yet and I thought that's probably actually a really good time, a helpful time to show other people what it is we're doing, how it works and then I'll check in again next year and show you how we're planting into it and how things are getting on growing in that um, position. So we're following the no dig rules. Um, anybody who's familiar with no dig already needs no explanation. If you're not, check out Charles Dowding. Um, he's on all social media but he has lots of really good videos on YouTube. I'm not a purist of any method but I really like a lot of the no dig rules and I am adopting them in a lot of what we're doing with growing in our garden. So I will flip the camera around and I'll show you what we're doing and how it works and then hopefully um, if you want to subscribe you can check in again next year and see how it's looking with plants in and how things are getting on. So if you've seen previous videos, you'll know that we have a corner plot, so we've got a garden wrapping around the house on three sides. This is the front garden, and up until about a week ago, it was just grass going right up into the hedge there. But it wasn't great grass because it was losing a lot from being so close to the hedge. The chickens like to scratch in it. Um, it wasn't really a useful space, so it was very easy for me to make the decision to sacrifice it and use this for a new flower border. So put a nice curve on it just to make it a bit more interesting. And we've lined it with bricks, but this is temporary just because we happen to have a really useful sack of bricks that we use for all sorts of things. Um, and the bricks are just there to mark out the edge whilst we're establishing this border. And then in the spring, we'll take the bricks away and we'll just put a bit of an edge on there using a lawn edger. So it's quite a busy little neighbourhood, so you can probably hear some people walking past in the street. Um, so apologies for anything that's said that I can't control. So this corner here um, is a, a corner that's been troubling me for a really long time because it's where my dog likes to charge up to the corner and bark at the neighbourhood. So it's just, you know, nothing really gets a chance to grow here, not even the grass. So we figured by putting a flower border there and also we'll put a small barrier up it will prevent her from doing that in future and we can put something beautiful in its place it's quite a shaded area this corner so we're going to have to think very carefully about the kind of plants that are going to thrive in this area and then here we have a hazel sapling that will hopefully form a nice shady corner here as well so how have we started doing this with an awful lot of cardboard so what we've got is a really good layer of cardboard which is running all the way underneath the compost there. So we put down a hose pipe to mark out the area that we wanted. We then put cardboard in the space that was to be covered with soil and just weighed it down with bricks until we got that compost and filled it up to a really, really good deep mulch. We haven't quite finished yet, but it's not a rush job. So when we do get hold of some more cardboard, hopefully within this week, We'll layer that up here into this area and then we'll fill this with some more compost as well. So it's really simple, it's really straightforward. And we already know that it works really well because we've done it before elsewhere in the garden. So it's just very straightforward. It's very cheap to do. Obviously it depends how much your compost costs you, but you can do cheaper options if you make a large quantity of your own compost, but we're beginning to build up ourselves. Um, or even getting manure, very well rotted down manure from somewhere else to bring in. 
So it doesn't have to be an expensive way of establishing a border at all. Um, and then I think I'll probably put some bulbs into there over autumn to pop out early spring, and then we'll start to put some more plants straight into the ground that we'll sow ourselves in the springtime. So that is the plan. Um, I'll take you over, we're not looking very pretty right now because I need to deadhead, um, but I'll show you what the other borders look like, which we've already established. Um, if you go onto my Instagram, you'll see some of the photos that I've taken throughout the year of that beginning to develop as well. So it's getting quite noisy this evening, lots of people moving around. With lots of vans and cars passing. So, okay, I need to do some deadheading and I need to um, put the edge back onto the lawn and there's paper in there and there's toys down here and that's just my life with kids in the garden. Um, but this was only established this year. So we put down the cardboard and we lined it with bricks, which we've since taken away. And then we planted up in the spring and already, I mean, the peas are past the best now, um, but we're already seeing it looking really full, really rich, really healthy. As I said before, it's quite kind of jungle-like in that corner. Um, we've even got some more sunflowers beginning to pop up, which will grow over the next few weeks um, and surpass some of the lower growth. The cosmos are bullies, to be honest. I'm going to do fewer cosmos next year. Um, and the sweet peas, they got knocked over in some wind that we had a couple of weeks ago. So I hacked from right back and we've had another flurry of growth. In fact, if you look closely behind the rogue tomatoes that are self-sown, which I quite love, um, you can see that I'm holding up the sweet peas just using the um, welly boot rack. I was in a rush leaving the house. I saw the wind had knocked it all over. And I knew if I left it, it would just be gone. I would have lost the plant. So I chucked all the wellies onto the ground and um, just put the boot rack into here and it's doing a great job. So um, there's nowhere for wellies to live at the moment. But anyway, sidetracking here. So this is what I mean. It's first year, there's a lot that I will do differently with planting I think next year as I kind of get used to the space and which plants work well together. And like there's a gap there, there shouldn't be a gap there. But for a first year of growing in an area that was just grass this time last year, it's great, you know, we've established a really nice border there. Um, and then we've got some bits on the driveway that need to go to the dump. That's a lockdown problem, cannot get an appointment. Um, but anyway, ignoring the rubbish that I need to get sorted. This is the other border. So again, nice mix of plants. Bindweed that I do need to sort out because it's beginning to creep back in. I was doing so well with it. But that was nothing. There was just nothing there this time last year. So I feel like very, very quickly and very cheaply we've managed to establish some very pretty looking um, borders in our garden. So that's the plan for that one. Um, it's quite a big one as well and I've gone quite deep on it. And the main reason for that is that I've got ambitions of um, putting um, like a globe artichoke dead centre at the back of the border. Um, let me flip it around to give you more of a scent of it again so it gets there's a couple of narrow points this corner here kind of just there we know we're going to need to get some shade loving plants plants that can cope with a little bit of um kind of poor ground really but dead center here there we go just that area there that's where we're thinking of putting a globe artichoke and then having other plants, a mix of flowers and edibles kind of intermixed around it as well. Because we like the idea of having edibles in amongst of our um, ornamental plants too. It's really simple. <laughs> it's really straightforward and it's really easy and quite cheap to do as well. And it's something that I think already, as I kind of come back here, has started to change the personality of our garden. So <laughs> standing on scooters there. Um, <laughs> my garden's littered with children's things. So yeah, it started to change the shape and the personality of this part of the garden already. Yes, there's a child swimming float in the bird bath. I despair. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I can picture it already. I can't wait to see it. That next year we'll have, you know, lots of big bushy plants and flowers and hopefully some edibles in there too. So I guess what I'm saying is if you've got a space in your garden that you think 
is not really serving a purpose and is looking a little bit lost, um, as that area did, then maybe this is something you could try. So um, all you need is some cardboard. You could painstakingly save up everything that you get ordered and delivered to your house. Um, but actually, if you go into some shops, cycling shops, um, we get ours from um, a local like dog supply shop for the dog food. Um, so you don't have to wait and wait to get cardboard. You can just go and get a bulk load from someone if you just go and have a chat with them. Um, and I think that can be the biggest stumbling block for some people, but it doesn't have to be. Um, the second stumbling block is obviously the compost. You need a lot of it to get going. And then once a year, you want to kind of mulch with a heavy mulch of compost again to enrich that soil. Um, but if you're canny about it, you can get it cheaply. You can make your own um, or you can you know, speak to a local stables or something like that and see if you can get hold of some, you know, without having to pay too much for it. So I think the barriers that people have to doing this don't need to be barriers. You can just think about it if it's something that you really want to do. Um, the main thing about it is it's no dig. So again, have a look at Charles Dowding about how to do a no dig bed properly. But what it does do long term is enrich your soil. It allows your soil to become much healthier. You don't dig down into it. Um, you really are just working on the surface of it, planting new things and pulling things out when they've had their life. You're not working into the soil too deeply and it allows the worms to do that for you and it allows the soil to start to kind of build up its own ecosystem, which is much healthier. I mean, if you look at the, it's like 30 years of soil fertility left in our farms in the UK, which is shocking. It's probably less than that. If you know the details, um, let me know because I can't quite remember. But we don't have great soil fertility anymore in this country. And it's a large part because we um, have been tilling our soil too much. So by finding alternative ways, looking at not digging over, um, you're going to really improve it and it becomes a much richer environment to be planting into. I'm sure anyone who's watching this who knows a thing or two about no dig will be kind of nodding along and, and going, yeah, we know this, we know this. But I think that anyone who doesn't know it yet, it can seem a bit of a, an eye-opener, really. Um, and once you see just how easy it is to do, it feels like cheating. Um, I don't dig. <laughs> I barely weed. I don't really have to. So, you know, even with bindweed, it's, you know, it's crept up a bit because I've not paid attention the last couple of weeks, but it's not a big problem for me anymore. So yeah, massive, massive respect for the no dig method. Do check it out. Um, and like I said, if you've got a space where you're thinking you could put something, um, give it a try. Anyway, my children hopefully have got pajamas on and teeth brushed by now. So I'm gonna go back inside and read a story to them. Take care folks.